Hello and welcome back to our discussion on Edison 3-wire and we're going to continue this on with looking at the Edison 3-wire if something were to happen to the neutral. So whether it became disconnected, open or broke, we're going to see what happens and how um, important the neutral conductor is in an Edison 3-wire. Okay, so we're going to leave off from where we, we had uh, our last discussion. Now, you'll notice that we only have two loads. We had, a, we had a 10 amp load over here and a 3 amp load down here. We're just going to assume that those were unplugged from the circuit or uh, turned off for whatever reason. It's just simpler to work with two loads in this particular uh, case because, again, that is all of our, all our um, ILM goes into as far as uh, calculations go. So we won't concern ourselves with another extra two loads. We're just going to take a look at uh, two loads, a 4 amp load and a 12 amp load. And then we're going to see what happens if the neutral becomes disconnected. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the neutral is really there to make sure that the voltages at both of our loads are pretty much equal. And we're going to see that when we do our calculations here. Before we can talk about breaking the neutral, what we have to do is look at the circuit like it's completely intact, everything is operating as it should normally. And then we get all of our voltage drops for that, and then we will uh, figure out what the ohmic values are for these, and then we'll erase the neutral out of here, and then recalculate everything. And so let's uh, start with that. So first of all, we're going to take a look at our um, currents around the Edison 3-wire. So starting on, on line 1, we know that we have 4 amps that are being required for this load here. So we know that we're only going to have 4 amps required going down that wire. So again, it'd be going in this direction clockwise. That's how we're going to do all of our calculations. So we know we have 4 amps going through the load and then 4 amps coming out to this intersection here. Then we know that we need 12 leaving, or 12 going into this load, again, clockwise. So we have 12 amps that are required to go through here, and we have 12 amps leaving, going in this direction. Again, 12 amps there. So the only thing that we don't know is our neutral. And we can see that the neutral carries the, the difference in current between these two loads. And so we know that that's 8 amps and it's going to have to go in this direction to make up the difference between the 4 and the 12. So that means we have 8 amps on our neutral conductor going in this direction towards the intersection. Okay, so now we know our, our directions there and now we could put our polarity markers on here. So we know it's going in this direction so we're going to go negative here and positive there. And then we'll go down to here negative here, positive there, and then if we know it's going in this direction, it's going to be negative here and positive there. So now we can use that to calculate our voltage drops um, here. Again, because this one is fairly straightforward, again, we're, all, we're only using the point ones, just makes our, our math simple. And so this is going to be point 0.4 of a volt there. Come down here, we know that we've got 8 amps flowing on a neutral conductor, so this is going to be 0.8 of a volt there. And again, because we've got 12 amps flowing on here, multiply that by 0.1, we've got 1.2 volts there. Okay, so now we can start working on our loads and figuring out the, the actual volt drop there. So we start with 120, just like we did last time. We come up here, we see that we've got a negative symbol there, so we subtract 0.4, and then we come back through here, and we see that we've got a, a positive symbol, and we add 0.8. So that means our load voltage here is 120.4 volts. Okay, so for load 1, 120.4. Start at the bottom load, start with 120. We subtract 0.8, go through, and then we subtract 1.2. So that gives us a total of, of two volts subtracted because again, we hit a, a negative symbol there. So that makes our voltage here 118 volts. All right, 
So there we go. So now we know our voltage is there. So how does that help us? Well, what we're going to do now is figure out what the actual resistive values are of these loads. Now, just to put this into some sort of perspective, imagine this is your, your entertainment room. Your 4 amp load could be something as um, complicated, and, but again, the, the right amount of current would be about 4 amps for a, you know, a large screen TV. I think my 46 inch that I measured last time was about 3 amps, so if you've got a 65 inch brand new TV, you might be at about the 4 amp range there. So that could be a TV. So we might want to just call that. Let's say that that is the TV. Okay. Maybe your entertainment room is in the basement. It's a little cold down there, so you have a little heater. And that could be your 12 amps, which would be about right. So we'll call that the heater. And then we're just going to keep that in kind of perspective because it's going to affect what happens and how things, uh, you know, the voltage drops that you expect to see. Again, these, these voltage drops are, are you know, well within the limits of, of any of these appliances, so it should, everything should work just fine. Okay, so now let's figure out what the resistive value looks like for these particular devices. So again, what we're doing here is we've got 120 volts, and what we're going to do is, again, divide that by 4 amps. And I'll just use my orange there. Four amps. And this one's going to be by 12 amps. And that's going to give us our R, right? Because R is equal to E over I. But in this case, it's a voltage drop. So it would be V over I. OK, so that is our formula. So we've got V over I in both of these situations here. And I'm just going to get this out of here. so we not so messy. So for this particular calculation here, it works out to 30.1 ohms. And this one down here works out to 9.833. Repeat. And that would be ohmic value. Okay, so now we know the ohmic values there, and that's going to help us when we break the neutral. So that's what we're going to do now, is we're going to erase this neutral component here, this wire, and take that right out of the circuit. So let's just get rid of that completely, just so it's not confusing us. So we'll just, if it's broken, it's no longer in the circuit, so it's gone. So we'll get rid of that. take it out of the circuit. It's no longer connected. Now you'll notice that we, we wrote 120 and 120. Those were in reference to the neutral. So if the neutral is no longer there, we don't have 120 volts. Because 120 is a center tap measurement. And so if we've lost our center conductor, which is our neutral conductor, grounded conductor, we don't have that in the circuit anymore, so we no longer have the ability to have 120 volts in our circuit. So now what we have is 240 volts, because we're going between line one and line two only. Okay, so that's what we have now. We have, and what does this look like? It's a, a series circuit. Okay, so our series circuit was based on um, or sorry, our, our currents here were based on the fact that we had, you know, different loads and we had a neutral conductor, which sort of made these like parallel loads. But now we no longer have a parallel circuit anymore. So what do we know about series circuits? If the current is the same through all of the devices, all of the components, all the loads, right? So we can't have 4 amps in here and 12 amps in here. That doesn't work anymore. So we have to get rid of that. So let's, let's get rid of the, the 12 amps and the 4 amps. OK, so those are no longer there. We'll get rid of that here and here. Now look at our voltage drops on our resistors, or what 
you know, the, the wire. And so the voltage drop in the wire was based exclusively on the load that was, it was feeding. So that no longer applies, so we get rid of that. Okay. Get rid of that. Now again, this, low, this voltage up here was based on the, on the neutral conductor being in place and the four amps was also, so let's get rid of that. That's just gonna lead to confusion. So we'll try and clean this up as much as we can before we start working on the rest of this. And same thing down here, 118 was based on the neutral conductor being in place. But what does stay constant is the resistance values. So those stay the same. And so now we can use this. Now we've got a series circuit with four loads in it. And let's take a look at those. And again, what we're gonna do is calculate our R total. So R total is equal to all of our resistances added up because it's a series circuit. So we go 0 0.1 plus 30.1 plus 0.1, or sorry, I guess we'll go to the next one, plus 9.833 plus 0.1. And that gives us an R total of, what did I have here? 40.133. Okay, so that is our R total. Now, the next thing we want to do in a series circuit is figure out what the current flow through all of these devices is, because it's all the same. So again, we take our 240 volts that we have, and we divide that by our resistance total of 40.133 ohms, and that equals an I total of five, oops, I'm just gonna switch colors here so we keep our currents all the same. 5.98 amps. Okay, so that's what's going to be flowing through here. That is our I total. Okay, so now what we can do is start figuring out what our voltage drops are because we know that we have 5.98 amps flowing through everything. Just going to erase this so this is not in our way again. And so again, we have 5.98 amps going through all of this. So this one is going to be, for a voltage drop, is going to be 0 0.598. So 0 0.598 volts there. And again, just because this one's exactly the same, might as well just do it now. 0 0.598 volts there. And then, just go down to this one here. Got 5.9 amps going through, 5.98 amps flowing through there, and that works out to 58.8 volts there. Now again, this be, being a heater, what's going to end up happening is it probably just will not heat up like it should. But again, this being our, our brand new 65 inch TV, if we take 5.98 amps and we times that by 30.1, we end up with 179.99 volts. So again, it could be very destructive to your electronics and anything that you would have plugged into that. So again, a very dangerous situation when we lose our neutral conductor, but that is how you calculate the voltage drops when a neutral conductor is out of comes out of the circuit, whether it's by disconnection or a breakage. Um, so this is what happens. So again, just remember that what you have to do before you start even worrying about the, the broken neutral conductors, you have to do all of your calculations and all your voltage drops with the assumption that the neutral conductor is still in place. And then even though you don't even get rid of the neutral at that point, what you have to do is figure out what the 
resistance values, what it looks like to the circuit as far as the you know, opposition to current flow goes and take a look at those, get those two loads calculated out for their resistive values and then get rid of your neutral conductor and erase all of the currents, all the little voltage drops that were for the wire and the voltage drops in here and here because again, once that happens, once the neutral conductor uh, breaks, then all of those those calculations that you based on previously are null and void. They don't exist anymore. And then you have to remember that, again, you're not using 120 volts anymore. You're going to 240 volts. And Kirchhoff's voltage law would state that if we added all four of these voltages up, it should equal our source voltage. So that is how you do a Edison 3-wire with a broken neutral.